Welcome to the VITS Occupational Therapy Treatment Planning Process, looking specifically now at determining the client's phase of treatment, their prognosis, the approaches and frames of reference we'll adopt, and these are for clients with a physical condition. I'd encourage you to follow along at the back of the treatment manual um, to have more information about each of these aspects. So starting with the phase of the illness or the injury, there are five different phases and this will help us dictate what the client's prognosis likely is and which approaches we want to adopt. So with the five phases, there is an acute phase, which is when the client has had a recent onset but is not yet medically stable. Sometimes OT is um, or is not involved in this phase, um, but quite minimally involved. Then the restorative and chronic phase is really the predominant phases that we're going to see our clients in, and particularly the third-year fieldwork groups. So a restorative phase is when it's still a recent onset, they often are still admitted to hospital, and we're going to focus primarily on improving or restoring their function. A chronic phase is further down the line, maybe it's been months or years, and the client has now plateaued, and we're going to focus more on primarily compensating and adapting to improve their occupational engagement. Um, or also maintaining if, if it is a progressive condition that we expect to get worse. There's also a pre-discharge phase. That is when a client is just about to be discharged. So this is often when they in hospital and you're focusing a lot on caregiver education sessions um, and preparing them for discharge and for the home. And it might include a home visit. And then there's also a palliative or terminal phase where we expect end of life is soon and we really want to focus just on improving quality of life. Next, we look at the client's prognosis and overall, if it is good, we'll look at improving mostly. If it's poor, more compensating and adapting, but often clients are, have a fair prognosis where we might use a mix of approaches. Prognosis is judged by tabulating all the different factors that may influence prognosis and creating a tick list of whether this is a poor prognostic indicator, fair, good, excellent, um, or perhaps guarded. This table just gives students an idea of what factors to look out for um, and what information to gather from the background information, but is not a collectively exhaustive list either. Um, students can just choose which factors are relevant for their clients. Once a client's prognosis is clear, the student can then select which approaches are going to be best suited to that client and most relevant. And just a reminder, they can use multiple approaches and many therapists do in their clinical practice. The first approach is the create promote approach, which is more focused on health promotion there's then the establish restore approach, which is focused on improving client factors, performance skills and categories of occupation. So these are going to inform aims. Um, aims will be worded as improve independence in bathing or improve muscle strength of the right elbow flexors. So the, the verb here is improve. Then there's the maintain approach, which is used for clients that are at risk of complications or deterioration. So particularly for clients that have progressive conditions like Alzheimer's disease or arthritis, where we expect them to get worse, or also conditions that need intensive therapy, like for example, clients with burn injuries, where they are at risk of complicating and developing contractures, we want to use a maintain approach here. Then there's a modify approach which looks at compensating or adapting either the task, the environment, or issuing assistive devices to improve their independence or their functioning in a category of occupation. And lastly, there's the prevention approach, primary, secondary, or tertiary prevention. Primary prevention is when you prevent an illness occurring in a healthy population. A secondary prevention is preventing a reoccurrence of a disease. So for example, a 
client that's had a stroke preventing a second stroke or tertiary prevention is when we're preventing complications from arising. For example, pressure sores in a client with a spinal cord injury. Then moving on to frames of reference, again, these inform the treatment principles that will be used in order to achieve aims. Please refer to page 44 of the treatment manual for a full list of the frames of references taught. And just to note, we can use multiple frames of reference to treat one client. The frames of reference that were exclusively taught in the physical blocks was firstly the biomechanical approach. This frame of reference is used to treat musculoskeletal conditions and spinal cord injuries and focus on client factors such as muscle strength and range of motion. In the sensory motor frame of reference, there are three sensory motor frames of references taught. It is Brunstrom, NDT or Bobath and Ruert. All of these frames of reference are only used to treat clients with some sort of brain condition or brain injury, such as a stroke or traumatic brain injury or a brain tumor, and focuses primarily on improving client factors such as selective control of movement. Just to note, Brunstrom is only used for assessment purposes and planning of treatment, but the Brunstrom treatment principles are not taught at WITS. Then the NDT or Bobath frame of reference focuses on treatment principles such as manual guidance at key points of control. And then the RUID frame of reference details facilitatory or inhibitory techniques. This is to inhibit hypertonicity or to facilitate a muscle contraction. And then lastly, the motory learning, or also called the Kahn Shepherd frame of reference, is also only used to treat brain injuries or brain uh, conditions, also focusing on restoring things like um, selective control of movement. Principles from this frame of reference are things such as visual demonstration or verbal feedback to the client. Just to note, the treatment manuals that the third years receive contain mostly treatment principles under each of the client factors derived from various frames of reference. So for example, if you look under selective control of movement, there's already a summarized list of all the treatment principles that they can select from. However, it might not be clear in the treatment manual which frames of reference each of those points are derived from. But in their theory notes, they will have a better description of each frame of reference that they were taught. Lastly, let's look at two examples of common cases that you might encounter on third year fieldwork. So firstly, we have an example of Peter, who's a 65-year-old male. He had a stroke 10 years ago and is currently living in a home for people with physical disabilities. We know that because the stroke was so long ago, he's in a chronic phase in terms of prognosis, which indicates it's fair here, would mean that he has some poor prognostic indicators, maybe such as his age and timing of intervention, but also good prognostic indicators, maybe such as access to healthcare or um, resources. And then the approaches that would be most appropriate for this sort of client would be modify, which is compensating and adapting, maybe establish and restoring um, in terms of especially categories of occupation, such as improving functional mobility, and then definitely prevention if he is at risk of having another stroke and you find that his insight is very low. Frames of reference that are going to be most appropriate for him are probably the client-centered frame of reference and learning frame of reference, not so much those physical uh, frames of reference such as the sensory motor, NDT, because it's unlikely that you're going to focus on improving SCOM in a client like this. Then looking at a very different case, this is Zintler, a 35-year-old female who had a traumatic brain injury one week ago and is currently admitted to hospital. We know that she's in the restorative phase because the onset of her injury was quite recent and she's medically stable and ready for therapy. Her functional prognosis is also fair, but this might be due to different reasons. So her good prognostic indicators might be things such as her age because of the neuroplasticity that can still occur, 
but other poor factors such as maybe her access to healthcare and her level of motivation. Approaches that we would primarily use with her are establish and restore because we want to improve a lot of those physical client factors and cognitive client factors and also prevention but more tertiary prevention where we want to prevent complications, for example contractures and hypertonicity. For her, the appropriate frames of reference would be those physical neuro-based frames of reference such as sensory motor, motor relearning or Khan Shepherd, and cognitive frame of reference if she has cognitive fallout.